You are listening to Comedy Club for Kids presents. Radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense. Watch your baked bean faces. I hope you're all dandy, well and staying at home and also sitting at home and rolling over at home too, even if you aren't a small dog. Uh, Definitely don't poo at home though. That is disgusting. Do that outside during your daily walk. Hello, it's me, Tin, and, and I am back with another Radio Nonsense, the official Comedy Club for Kids podcast, suitable for all ages from 0 to 99. See, I corrected that. Thank you, everyone that complained. And 101, all the way to you infinite immortal space beings who are allowed to listen, unless you're only 100 years into immortality, in which case, just wait, yeah? I mean, just wait a year. You've got all of time to catch up, so why not spend that 100th year doing something else? Like, I don't know... Helping organise biscuits by size, or shouting at a duck, or seeing if you can perfect being able to stand on just one ear. Sorry for the little break between episodes, but it was Easter, and I went on an egg hunt that took about a week. It was like a proper egg safari, and I had to slowly stake out the eggs, work out their movements, and then track them through the wilderness before actually catching them with a net. Uh, But I did catch them, and I interrogated them lots, and I found that if you unscramble scrambled eggs, you get a very special secret message. Uh, No, I won't tell you what it is. You'll just have to try for yourselves. But warning, it is very, very messy. Uh, The podcast is back now, though, and there is a fantastic guest comedian on this episode helping to answer your questions. And don't forget, if you want to ask a comedian an important question about absolutely anything, then you can. Details of how to send it in will be at the end of the show. Uh, Not the very end. That's when there's no noise because it's the very end. It's finished. And if you keep listening to that bit, I think you'll just fall over. So do listen to the bit before the end and then fall over. (laughs) Uh, Well, I'm joined on today's show, as you can probably hear by the gargling, by none other. I mean, who else gargles like that but the story beast? Hello. Oh, hello there. Uh, Sorry, I didn't... uh, uh, I'll just get my gargling out of the way, you know, before we start. Lovely to have you. Lovely to be had on here. And what were you gargling? Uh, That was uh, an unidentified... Uh, pale liquid it comes out the the tap um it, it's see-through entirely see-through uh what do you call that um, uh i don't know i've not heard of that before actually you never heard of that you, you don't have I, mean, I just i came into my house and there was this they've got them in several of the rooms in the house you've got uh just a, a sort of a tap and you turn it on and out comes this this delicious liquid Oh, is it's it ridiculous. like gone off milk? Is it sort of a sick apple juice? I don't know. It's, you know, it's ridiculous because those would actually be tastes. It just tastes of 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 nothing really. Just just sort of wet. It tastes of wet. Oh, if hey, that makes sense. Is it liquid air? It could be liquid air. It, it, I, 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 it's sort of got the same sort of look as air. You know, entirely see through. Wow. I'm fascinated, but I might have to check and see if there's any of that in, in where I live as well. Eh? Check your taps, you know, yeah. and you, you can call a man in and to see whether, you know, you've got it. In the, but he'll just say that's perfectly normal. Wow. Weird. Very weird. Very weird. Well, I, I was going to ask how you're getting on, but obviously you, you've got some very exciting things uh, going on uh, where, where you're, you're stuck at the moment. Well, I've, I've certainly been looking in, into the tap thing. Uh, I'll continue my researches into that and I will tell you how I get on with that. But uh, I, I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, I've got a I've got a very small person to look after. He's only a few months old. Uh, he's, he says he's my son, or they say he's my son. He has, he's yet to say anything about it, to be honest. Uh, but as far as he's concerned, everything's completely normal at the moment. Oh, that's uh, good. He, I yeah. was going to just check, because you said a small person, and then you said only a few months old. So I'm assuming you mean a baby and not a gnome. A baby, that's the word, isn't it? That right. is the, it's not a gnome. Well, I, I don't know. It's hard to tell at this point, isn't it? Sure. Because they do, they are roughly the same size. That's but he's true, yet to develop a little beard and he's not made of ceramics and sitting at the end of my garden. Does he have a pointy hat? I mean, I've never seen him wear it, but hmm. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm you not entirely pointy sure. Pointy shoes? Well, he does have pointy shoes, actually. Yeah. A little, cur- little curly shoes with little bells at the end. Yes. I mean, that's very gnome like. That it does sound like a gnome. He, he's yet to repair any shoes, though. Ah, okay. Well, that'll be, the, I think that'll probably be the sign. That will be the sign. I, once he repairs a shoe, again, I'll get back to you about mm. that one as well. Sure. But otherwise, otherwise, uh, baby slash gnome baby is doing fine. He's very well, actually. Yes. He's, uh, he's uh, again, yet, yet to tell me his name. I've decided to call him 
uh, uh, yeah, that. I've decided that's to call him. Uh, uh, and until he comes up with anything better, that's the way it's going to stay. Yeah. How do you spell that? Like, if you have to write that down for someone, how do you spell that name? So that'd be H U A H, and then just P F U U H. Yeah. And then yeah. just repeat that. Uh, for, uh, for. Yeah, it's lovely. Perfect. That's a lovely yeah. name. That's a really nice name. I should have nice, heard that it? before. Yeah, really nice. Yeah, yeah, great. Well, um, I'm glad to hear that you're doing all right. And and I, I wanted because obviously everyone listening to this uh, is stuck at home at the moment uh, and maybe pretending to homeschool or not. Um, but I wondered if you had a helpful tip for anyone that might be being, you know, feeling a bit bored because they're trapped indoors. Uh, is there anything that you've been doing to keep yourself entertained, or perhaps um, her fur has been doing? Well, Herfer has been doing. Uh, he's been doing some marvelous things. Uh, he's been teaching me how to wrestle, uh, which is wow. which is quite good. Uh, he uh, and you know I sort of go in and sort of I've got a great big sort of rather hairy face, a bit like a strategically shaved bear, and I sort of go in and uh, try to sort of blow a raspberry on his belly, uh, and he finds that very funny, uh, and then he grabs my beard and my long hair and then tries to sort of pull pull that as hard as he possibly can. Uh, and that is definitely an illegal move. And yeah. I have told him that on many cases. There's no wrestling organization in the world that would stand for that kind of illegal move. Uh, but still, he keeps pulling that nonsense. It's, it's I mean, that sounds quite dangerous because if he pulls too hard, he'll pull your whole face off, right? I mean, that I mean, it's yet to get to that point, but he is getting stronger. Um, my so my other tip, my other tip, actually, and this is perfect if you happen to have baby slash gnome slash little brother or sister, cannot recommend hard uh, i cannot recommend dressing them up i can recommend it what am i saying i can recommend <laughs> dressing them up in something really silly uh and because again because he's so small he doesn't think there's anything wrong with dressing up silly he doesn't know again, the idea of dressing is silly to him yeah and so dressing him up in something i dressed him up as a silly sailor today oh that's we, amazing What's my, what, what uh, costume is a silly sailor what's a silly sailor have? Well, my my uh, my wife happened to notice that he had uh, a stripy blue onesie on, and uh, she also noticed that it was exactly the same stripy blue onesie as was being sported by the plush octopus, which someone had got him for his for his birth, and uh, and we also had a little sailor hat, and a, and and yeah, it's just uh, he's going to look ridiculous. And the thing is, it's not going to embarrass him now, but. You wait, uh, you know, eventually he will have an 18th birthday or a 21st birthday. And I don't know if any of you have older brothers or sisters who've had those. But usually when you're a bit older, people, your mum and dad or your adult in general will put up some silly photos because they remember. They remember how ridiculous they make you look. And that picture will go up and then all your friends will laugh at it in the future. So you're playing the long game here. I, he finds it perfectly fine for the moment. But sooner or later, he's going to be he's going to find that absolutely humiliating. And then I will laugh in the future. That's good. I mean, it's nice to have future laughs planned. I think that's really good. Um, I, do also wonder, I do also wonder though, if, if he's wearing the same as his octopus, maybe he's having the laugh because he's, you know, sort of coordinated his dress sense with the octopus in advance. I, I mean, uh, he could be playing with us. You're absolutely right. I mean, this could just be the octopus's idea. To be honest, I mean, yeah, I mean, I have slept with the octopus quite close to my head, so it might just be whispering to me at night. That, come to think of it, oh. that is a distinct possibility. That's very <sighs> worrying. That's very, very worrying. Octopus. Just, yeah, definitely. Uh, just check. Maybe at night, pretend to sleep, uh, and hear if you can hear any octopus whisperings. If I hear any, you know <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, just yeah. be careful. Be careful. Be, I will be careful. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, you're very welcome. I just, you know, I've experience of this before. So, uh, yeah, good. Well, um, thank you. That's an excellent tip, though. Brilliant tip if, if any listeners do have younger brothers or sisters. Um, I think it also works for pets as well. You can just dress them up in something very ludicrous. Uh, my favourite is a tiny Mexican wrestler. All you need is a little moustache. Uh, it tends to work. So, um uh, uh, the Story Beast. Uh, this is an audio podcast. Uh, people are Literally. hearing it with their ears, hopefully, and not up their noses or anywhere else. Um, do you Don't have do a favourite noise that you like to do for audio purposes only? What's What's the noise that you like people to hear? 
Well, the thing I've just discovered I really like is the sound of a whispering octopus, obviously. Where it's just... uh, that sort of sound. Uh, I've decided I, that's that's definitely my favourite. But coming in a close second at this point in time is uh, there's a very scary and dangerous machine in my kitchen called a coffee grinder. Yeah. And uh, it's and it's it's got a so it's got little blades inside. So you put the coffee beans in, and then you put the lid on, so you don't hurt your fingers. And then it goes, oh, no. and it's a terrifying noise. I'm not going to lie. It makes every it makes the baby jump. It makes my wife jump. It makes me jump, and I'm the one doing it. I know it's going to happen, and every day I do it with such great trepidation. But I do it very brave. I, I put on a brave front. Yeah, to go to the machine. Because I know it grinds my coffee, and the thing is, adults adults can't function if they don't have their coffee or tea for that long. Because if they haven't had their tea or coffee for that long, they start to wind down and can't function any more. And so you just need to keep uh, topping up, to be honest. And if you don't top up, then uh, you will go to sleep and you'll completely cease to function. Well, I, I mean, I, I, I love the noise. I, I should uh, also add that, that for any children listening, if you don't have coffee, that means you can't just suddenly poo uh, without any warning. And that's why it's really important to have coffee because it just makes you suddenly need to poo without warning. And without that, it's, just it's one of the... It's, 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 some might call it a side effect. Some people will call it an effect. Absolutely. It's just you, sometimes that's what you're going for. But it, it does it keeps you up and it makes you poo. Yes, absolutely. Um, but what I wanted to ask, and, and you know, please don't, uh, you know, think that I am defending coffee beans unnecessarily. But what have they done to deserve being put into that noise? Because that sounds terrifying. It must be very scary for them. Being so delicious is the ah. answer, Tin. And I, I wish they had some moral fault in them. I wish the coffee beans had done something to deserve that. But I am entirely, as far as I'm, as the coffee beans are concerned, I am this horrible creature. As long, as far as a lot of being people are concerned i'm this horrible <laughs> creature which comes in and just like pours them into the into the dangerous machine with its whirling blades and i t- put the lid on cackling as i do it going ha, 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 ha. goodbye coffee beans goodbye forever and then the last thing i hear is as they go oh no <laughs> and it scares them even more than it scares me but you know it scares me a lot I mean, that was, I, I found that all very exciting. That was brilliant. Thank you so much for that wonderful noise. Uh, slightly terrifying, but wonderful noise. Uh, it, it, and I think it, even better if it has the added jeopardy of coffee beans involved at the beginning. Can I can I read to you a poem? I've written a poem about hot beverages, oh, which yes. I, I think you might enjoy. This, this one's called, uh, this is about the adult need for hot beverages. And uh, this one is called Kindness. <clears throat> Make your adult a cup of tea, if they've been good. But if they've been bad, make them a cup of tea anyway. Either way, remember to get the adult to boil the water, drop a tea bag into the mug, pour it out, pick up the cup of tea, and carry it safely to the sofa. However, if your adult has been very, very good, you may be so kind as to blow on it. Until it gets cool. Poem. Dropping the mic. That was lovely. That was good. And and I like, is that, uh, have you been reading that poem to your uh, gnome baby in the hope that, that you'll get a cup of tea out of it? No reaction. He has not made me a single cup of tea. I've had to make every single cup of tea for myself the last four months. And now I can see why, why you, you've named him Her Fur. Uh, her Fur. It's, I've yeah. barely got the energy to be able, if I if I if I had a bit more coffee, then yeah, I could I could I could definitely help him out and give him a name. But well, <laughs> that's the noise I make when I haven't had enough tea or coffee. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Well, that thank you for that wonderful poem. That was brilliant. Um, and uh, I should also just check uh, because this podcast is suitable for everyone aged six to ninety nine. I have clarified previously that one to five year olds are allowed, but they've got a lot of stuff to do. They're very busy, and one hundred year olds definitely not allowed. It's very complicated, but you know you've got to have a system. Um, but as it's suitable for everyone for most of those ages, um, is there a rude word that you definitely won't be saying to make sure this podcast is family friendly? I will not be saying at any point the word tittle tops. Oh, tittle tops is a word oh. I will not be. I will not be. Saying. It's it's horrid. It's a horrid word. Never call someone that. Tittle tops. Tittle tops. Tittle tops. It's it, no no. Don't call them that. 
No, don't call anyone that tittletops. There's a lot of Ugh. tea in there, but not like the good tea that you want a child to make you. It's bad teas. Tittletops, absolutely. Well, T I double D L E T O P S. Tittletops. Tittletops. No, no, not I saying don't. that. No, please don't say tittletops. Thank you for uh, for refraining from saying tittletops. It is a tittletops. never saying it ever again. Tittletops. No, thank you very much. Goodness. Well, um. On to our most important bit. We have had some questions sent in from Marianne, age nine, and she's asked two questions, so I will be Weird presenting name. you with two. What, Marianne? Marianne, age nine. Weird yeah, name. Marianne, I think the age nine is a surname, though, so I don't think that's... Oh, oh I see. Aged Nine? Aged Nine? It might be okay. Marianne Aged Nine. Yeah, that sounds, that, sounds, um, that sounds about right, doesn't it, actually? Marianne Agadnine. Nice to nice to hear from you, Marianne Agadnine. <laughs> it's a it's a lovely name when you say it like that. Actually, I, I'm so sorry I mispronounced it. I know it's 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 you have it with it's probably Spanish. I I suspect hmm. it's very good, very beautiful name, beautiful it's name. It's lovely name. Well, thank it's down you. Uh, flamenco thank guitar. <laughs> uh, I can't play the flamenco guitar, but it'd be it was sort of Marianne Agadnine. That's better. That's a much better uh, flamenco guitar. I don't have a flamingo here, so I don't know how to do it. Flamingo guitars are very difficult to play. Uh, they're yeah. usually meant for creatures with uh, a long, drooping, L-shaped beak and uh, one leg. Yeah. To play, it's uh, they're very hard for humans to play. Yeah, I don't have either of those things, so um, very difficult. Yeah, very I've difficult. got one of those things. Right. But, you know, sure. Yeah. It's still tricky. It's still tricky. Still very tricky. Well, uh, Marianne Agadnine has sent in two questions. Um, so the first one of these um, is uh, she has asked, what is your favourite board game? And she's put in that mine is Cluedo. And she means hers is Cluedo, not mine is Cluedo. Hers yours is isn't Cluedo. Mine isn't Cluedo. No. Mine is, yours isn't Cluedo. Mine, is Clu- mine isn't Cluedo either. Uh, although, you know, it's, it's a, Cluedo's a fun one, isn't it? It's mm. a game where, you know, everyone can join in trying to work out a murder and that's just nice isn't it it's lovely. Um, it's very, it's I, for, just for the families it's what everyone likes to get around together and do and go oh who's who's murdered someone yes and, uh working out i think that's very family friendly and yeah, very family friendly and uh, you know entertainment everyone gets you know justice is served at the end and that's the important thing yes i do just so to interrupt i, I do i hmm. have always wondered it's called clue dough but there's no dough in no one ever has any bread i i think clue i think if you wanted to re- I, it's neither it's it's there's no play-doh in it either i think you mm. should probably just craft the weapons out of play-doh as you go i think that would make cluedo far more fun for me personally uh, mm. your mileage may vary marianne agonine that's Don't true want to be and the also then you know game. who the murderer was because the they'd have play-doh on their hands and <laughs> play-doh the all the murderer over. would have a, a big splodge of play-doh on their face it's very difficult to murder someone with play doh, and mm. don't attempt it. Don't, no, don't attempt it. I mean, you can try thwacking time. someone over the head with a with a play doh lead pipe. That's probably acceptable. Or stabbing <laughs> someone with a play doh with play doh dagger. That again, yes. completely acceptable. Yes, yes. If anything, preferable. Shoot, shoot someone with a play doh pistol. Yes, very hard to do. <laughs> very hard to kill anyone with that. Yes, yes, indeed. But good advice, though. Very good advice. So, sorry, what, what I was asking, what, of course, is what is your favourite board game, Story Beast? My absolute favourite game is it's got a, it's got a very funny name. It's called Bobbins and Dobbins, oh. and Bobbins and Dobbins is a bluffing game where you have to come up with fake names of racehorses. And, and I don't know if, if you're familiar, but uh, racehorses have ridiculous names. Uh, so actually, I've got a little list here of uh, racehorse names. Now, this is sort of the the opposite of Robins and Dobbins. Now, hidden amongst here is one fake horse name. So these are. So I'm going to get let you guess, Tin, and which one of these is a fake horse okay. name. So, <laughs> Sir Barton, Tiffin, Tolgus, Char Star Shower, is Eminence, Handsome Chap. Saratoga Six, Honeysuckle, and Colin. <laughs> oh, that's so which one of those hard. is a fake horse name? Oh, that's very hard. I I really hope it's not Colin, and I really want to meet a horse called Colin. And I think I'm going to make that now my mission in life. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go, because I think there must be a horse called Colin. It seems impossible that there isn't a Colin the horse somewhere. I'm going to go for Handsome Chap. And... Uh, well, uh, I, I think you've made a perfectly reasonable uh, assumption here, and I will sell you, uh, put you out of your misery. Colin is a real racehorse. Yes. It is genuinely a real racehorse. However, 
all of those racehorses are real racehorse names. No. It was a trick question. I tricked you with my Hi. trickery. I'm so I'm so sorry. Uh, but here's That's the thing. Awful. If I did that to prove to you one important point, horses have ridiculous names. Well, so, apart from Colin. Apart from Colin. A Colin, which is it's I mean, if you meet it's hard to find a Colin nowadays, but um, it's there isn't a horse, to be quite frank. Uh, but um, yeah, but my the point with that little exercise is to show you horse names are ridiculous, and that is the lifeblood of Bobbins and Dobbins. It's a very easy game. It's a bluffing game. So you have to, all you have to do is get some pens, paper, three people minimum, and uh, the and a search engine where you can search the names of racehorses that ran in the Grand National or the Kentucky Der- Kentucky Derby, or just search recent horse races, and uh, <laughs> it'll come up with some names of horses. Then you, the announcer, write down the real racehorse names. You can use my list if you fancy, and then everyone comes up with li- comes up with their own silly racehorse names. So the announcer then reads out the names of each race. So that's usually however many people are playing. You come up with uh, a number of real ones and then an added uh, a number of fake ones and then an added real horse name. And you get points if you can guess which one was the real one. And you get two points if you if someone guesses your fake name as a real one. So it's yeah. a bluffing game. Yes. So yeah. <laughs> so it's a bluffing game. <laughs> It's a bluffing game. You just have to come up with as many fake horse names as possible. And yes, you get one point if you get the real horse name and two points if someone guesses your fake horse name. So it's a game where you can get be as creative as you like because horse names are really stupid. And as I say, very easy to play. Don't need to buy anything. Just need paper, pens and access to a search engine to search for silly real horse names. Could I ask, is, have you got a, a fake horse name that you could give us that you've made up that's, that maybe you've been successful with in the game before? I, I was very pleased that uh, th- this is the stupidest one I've ever come up with, which was Big Big Horsey Boy. <laughs> big Big Horsey Boy. You have to say it like that as well. That's so I was very pleased name. the number of people guessed that and that enabled me to win that game. That's so very good. Big, big horsey boys are great. And again, it makes me sad there hasn't been a horse called that so far. I get, well, you know, the world is long and, you know, and horses, you know, they, they only have a short racing life before sure. they have to go out to the pasture and have a nice retirement. Uh, but uh, we, but in the meantime, yeah, uh, every horse name will eventually happen if the universe is long. Excellent. Well, fingers crossed for big, big horsey boy on the racetrack at some point. It will be future that's very exciting well thank you for that was a very superb answer i don't think uh, uh marianne agadnini was expecting something like that she's got a very her very own brand new probably favorite game uh to play after hearing this which is very exciting um and the other question that, that marianne asked um and i thought you'd be good for this as well because she's asked what is your nickname and I know that you're the story beast. I, I'm not sure if you have a nickname. I've heard rumours that you've got a that some people maybe called you John Henry as a nickname no. before. In the, no, 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 I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, right. no, not in the slightest. Uh, sure, okay. But, but I will, I will say, uh, some people call me the. Oh, the. that's uh, the. You know, so you know, someone wants to shout to me, they go, "Hello, the," and uh, yeah, I respond to that. Uh, but the name I, I, I was given uh, a name. Uh, by my by my older sister when I was little, and I, in a uh, a fit of of just childish uh, truthfulness, decided to tell someone at school. Someone asked me precisely this question: "What's your nickname?" And I said, "My sister calls me Tittletops." Oh, oh no, I've said it again. Oh no, you just said and the word you said you weren't going to say. I know, I know, and and then and the worst thing about that is, uh, I then soon enough, everyone in the school started to call me Tittletops, till I changed again. schools. Well, so so, hang on. Is 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 Tiddle Tots a rude word? Oh no, I've just said it now. But it's, it's a rude Don't word say because, it is. because it's it's your nickname. It is. I think I think that was that was my that was my nickname, and that's probably why I've got an aversion to it. I mean, anyone else could use the word Tiddle Tops if they oh. fancy. Oh, good lord! It, it just sounds upsetting. It sounds upsetting. But yeah, so don't don't call anyone that in anger. But if someone calls you that with love, take it. Right, that's good advice. Is there, would you, is there any nicknames you'd you'd like to have? Uh, you know, I, I suddenly, I mean, after hearing this, I wish that my nickname was Colin the Horse. Co- Colin the Horse. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to be big, big, big horsey boy. 
Yeah, <laughs> I think we should all get horse nicknames. Yeah, I think I think that's fair, you know. And then we could run the Grand National instead. Oh, I think you know, fun. and we could we could climb over all of those those hedges and gates. And uh, I think I think human beings would. Uh, I mean, the horse has to does it has to do it. I yeah. think it's only fair that uh, occasionally the human beings have to do it as well. Yes, I think. Would we would we have to have small Shetland ponies like sitting on our backs? Yes, I think that's only fair. I think yeah. that's you know, just it's to show goodwill to the horses, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think that's very important. Something we should yeah. be doing. We should be doing. exactly. What's good for the goose is good for the horse. That's true, isn't it? Is that why you, if you take a horse to water, it sits in it and hogs a lot? Yes, I think that's uh, yeah, I think that's how it works. Yes, yes, that's the phrase, isn't it? I'm pretty sure that's I'm the phrase. That right. That's yeah. the phrase. Pretty yes. sure we got both of those absolutely spot on. Yes, I uh, think that's I've absolutely. I've got another I've got another poem actually. Oh, have you? Yes, oh, please, yeah, I've please. Got, do. I've got one more poem. Uh, and actually, uh, I have to say one of the other things about being stuck indoors a lot is it does give you a lot of time to read, which is absolutely marvelous. Uh, I mean, I I I kept on being told to to go out the house uh, when I was younger. And uh, now I can't, so I'm going <laughs> to so I'm going to stick around, and I'm going to read as much as I possibly can. And so, to that end, I've got a little poem. I wrote this one for my local library, actually. So, uh, a big shout out to Jersey Library, um, who aren't they aren't open open at this point in time, but like a lot of libraries nowadays, they do have a lot of books available on ebook. So, oh, if you nice. sign into their ebook system, then you can get uh, books to your parents. Kindle or e-reader or iPad, That's depending great. on what you got. And uh, but yeah, so this is a poem about. Uh, it's called "I Got Lost in a Really Good Book," and it was written for Jersey Library. <clears throat> I got lost in a really good book, and now I can't find my way back. I was left in the library, told take a look round the back of the library stacks. When this villainous volume fell from on high, from a shelf up above or a crack in the sky, and that was enough, it had just caught my eye. Oh! Though I never saw the hand that budged it, what weather or wand or wing had nudged it, the covers fell open so I couldn't judge it, and now I am trapped inside. I got lost in a really good book, stuck somewhere around the beginning. I've tried to leave the reading nook, but I think that the book might be winning. I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense. It's about this thick and about this dense, and the plot's heating up to a heat that's intense. If my mind was a farm, it would be a barn burner. It's a very energetically paced page turner with romance and robots and just a small murder. And that's just the table of contents. I got lost in a really good book. Now I'm on chapter one like a dunce. I knew if I did it, I'd go and get hooked. All it took was a word, and the word was once. And once you read once, a time falls upon it, as bold as brass, as fast as a comet, no longer a page with words written on it. Seas meet skies, time meets space, with a book still clamped around my face, it's taken me off to a different place, as annoyed as I am astonished. I got lost in a really good book, in the thrall of a terrible tome. What I've read so far has got me shook. Why did they let me take it home? Because now I'm caught in a storm of words where heretofore unknown nouns and verbs are flocking around the book like birds. And those words make sounds that I'm sure are unsoundable. They make me turn the book upside downable. I should just drop it, but it's unputdownable. And going from bad to worse. I'm still lost in a really good book, at the bit where all seems lost, when our heroes laid low have been forsook, and are sitting there counting the cost, and a million ravens are swirling around, a hole in the world that had swallowed the ground, when just at that moment what was lost becomes found. The genie gets to make her own wish. The tailor finds his missing stitch. The spoon picks up the courage to ask out the dish. While the wrong runner running, the race has won it. The detective points out precisely who done it. The spinning wheel gathers the loose end and spun it. And the villain is swallowed by a great big fish. I found my way out of a really good book by clambering up the last chapter. 
and prizing myself from the reading nook to bid goodbye to my captor, because now the journey was pretty much over, had made my way from one cover to another, recommended it to my best friend, my mum and my brother, walked my eyes from the contents to the ISBN and scaled down the blurb where the dust jacket ends, feeling somehow that I had made a new friend. So returned it and checked out another. Brilliant. Thank you. That was absolutely amazing. That was very exciting. And how long ago did you get lost in a book? I got lost. I, I mean, I, I've still, I've still got it clamped around my face. To be honest, I've sort of, I've moved it to just above my right eye. Right. Uh, so now I'm, so now I'm, I, I can just about, you know, put turn the coffee machine on, and uh, and uh, wrestle with my son. Do you think? I was going but, to say, do you think that's what her fur is trying to pull off your face? He could be trying to be helpful. Yeah, you, you may be right. Well, that's very kind of him. Very kind of him. And well, thank you. Thank you for some fantastic poems and some absolutely uh, fantastic answers uh, as well. Um, and uh, before before we let you get back to uh, sort of uh, attacking coffee beans and uh, wrestling with your gnome baby, um, listeners can find your stuff. I understand you're doing lots of stuff online and reading stories for them to keep them entertained. That's right. Uh, every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m., I'm on Facebook and Twitch. So you can follow me at facebook.com forward slash the story beast or on twitch.tv forward slash the story beast, uh, depending on what you fancy. Uh, and you can listen to me. I'm reading just classic old stories and a few silly poems. So, yes, it's it's a fun time. That sounds so come along. fantastic. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much again for your time and for joining us on the podcast today and answering all those questions and giving us poems and brilliant tips too. And uh, may I wish you the very best of luck um, in, well, finding out what that weird uh, stuff coming out of the taps is, really. I mean, I mainly I'm going to get to the bottom of it. You know, it comes out hot and cold. What? Depending on which tap. No. It's ridiculous. That's bonkers. <laughs> wow. Wow. I know. Well, there you go. I know. Uh, anyway, well, well, good luck with that and, uh, and take care. We'll speak to you very soon. Ta ta. <laughs> Well, Marianne Agidnin, uh, I hope that answers your important questions. And I also hope that you have a lot of fun making up names for horses and horse nicknames for yourself. Thank you so much to the Story Beast. And if you'd like to watch his wonderful stories on Twitch, as he said, they are at 2pm on Tuesdays and Thursdays on twitch.tv forward slash the Story Beast. And the links will be in the info for this episode too. That's 2pm GMT, which stands for Greenwich Mean Time, for any of those of you listening all the way around the world. Um, if you aren't based in the UK, to get Greenwich Mean Time, then basically you have to just choose the meanest time that you know of. So, for example, it's 2 o'clock, you idiot! OK, that's time to tune in. It's 11am, you smell face! That's kind of how it works. That's exactly how Mean Time works. Uh, if you have a question for this show about absolutely anything ever, then do ask a grown-up type person near you to help you email us at podcast at comedy club for kids. That's number four dot co dot UK. And let us know what it is and I'll find a comedian to answer it for you. Please also ask that grown-up type person to subscribe to this show on their podcast app so you never, ever miss an episode and to give us a lovely five-star review too and recommend it to all your friends and enemies and frenemies and enemies and, of course, Colin the Horse. See you soon and stay safe and well, but don't stay in a safe or a well as it'd be really uncomfortable and a bit stupid. Bye! You have been listening to Comedy Club for Kids Presents! Radio Nonsense! Radio Nonsense! Radio Nonsense! Radio Nonsense! Radio Nonsense! Nonsense. It's the end.